Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to another Fallout 76 Weapon Spotlight, where today we're going to try out the dragon. And not just any dragon, but a three-star legendary one that we were able to craft last week. We're going to take it for a test drive. It's an Executioner's Explosive Dragon, which uh, should be a very powerful one-shot weapon and uh, give us a little bit of extra oomph on the back end for really big stuff. So that's the idea here today. Remember, if you like videos like this and you want to see more, do go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. There's always a lot more to come on the channel. As always, what we're going to do here first is take a look at the weapon and the build we'll be running today. I will put timestamps in the description to make it easy for you to jump around. So if you want to see all that information, you can. If you just want to jump straight into the action, you can do that too. Without further ado, let's take a look at the weapon. So here we can see it. It is the dragon, and I really like the look of this weapon, and you can't really see it here. Well, you can see it, but it's not super clear, but the inscription on the barrel uh, itself is really, really cool looking. It's interesting because you've got the star there and the dragon name. I wonder if this is intended to be a Chinese import in some way. Uh, the, uh, the, the text style there looks very reminiscent of something you would see on uh, former communist block weaponry. So uh, I could imagine that might be the case. Maybe it was a, a pre-war Chinese replica thing that got sold in the United States, uh, but there isn't really a whole lot of lore behind it. It's just a really big gun. It works like a black powder rifle, but it fires four bullets at the same time, even though you only have to load one, which is pretty awesome. And uh, this one has the executioner's effect. So our targets will take 50% more damage when they're below 40% health. That is very effective on big tanky enemies, but uh, on really squishy stuff, we're going to kill that stuff in one shot anyway. So it'll be interesting to see if that effect pays off or not. We also have exploding bullets for extra damage and extra perception for more VATS critical accuracy. So all of those things are good. It's pretty self-explanatory. This is a big boom gun. Let's take a look at mutations. So this is my bloodied stealth commando character, which we've switched to rifleman today. We are still going to run at low health because I want to maximize the damage here. We want to get every little bit of damage we can out of this weapon. And the best way to do that is to run it at low health. So we've got adrenal reaction, which is going to give us more damage at low health. Marsupial and bird bones so we can jump high and land softly. Carnivore so meat is more effective. Chameleon, which as far as I can tell is utterly useless in every way. Uh, unless you want to go with a Berserker's build with no armor, then maybe you'd be okay. Uh, Eagle Eyes for more critical damage and better perception. Egghead for more intelligence, which means more XP. Healing Factor so we can heal up between fights. Scaly Skin for more damage and energy resistance. Speed Demon for faster movement and reload. And this guy has Talons too, which doesn't really do anything for us today, but it's there, so we'll mention it. You'll look at legendary perks. These are uh, the same as they've been for the last couple of weeks, I think. So uh, ammo factory so I can craft more ammo. Pretty simple stuff there. Legendary intelligence. Ultimately, my goal is to max that out so I can always run demolition expert and gunsmith at the same time. We're not quite there yet. I've got to grind out some more uh, perk coins, but we'll get there eventually. Then we've got legendary charisma so I can take more charisma perks. Remember, if you want to take more charisma, in your build so that you can share stronger perks, then don't do it this way. Put that in your native build and then uh, use a different legendary special to rank up. But for me, that's not wasn't my first concern. And honestly, I didn't even know about it when it first started, but hasn't been a huge issue for me. So I'm just kind of rolling with it at this point. Next up is follow through, which normally is very important for a stealth build. It makes your enemies take more damage after you land a successful sneak attack but that's only for 10 seconds. And unfortunately with the dragon, that has a 10 second reload time. Now that'll be a little faster for us because we have speed demon, but honestly, by the time you line up another shot, 10 seconds has passed. So we're not probably really gonna get anything out of that today. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I think that one's kind of an afterthought. Finally, we wrap things up with legendary endurance and legendary luck. So again, I can take more perks in those categories. Endurance, it lets me take uh, Revenant, which gives me more damage if I get revived during a fight. Not a factor during uh, 
during these weapon spotlight videos generally, but uh, during normal gameplay it definitely helps. And Legendary Luck lets me take all the luck perks that I need normally, plus a bunch of Vats Critical related perks, so all good stuff there. Let's take a look at the special build and the regular perk cards, and then we'll jump into things. Okay, so here's what we've got. This is normally a bloodied stealth commando, uh, but I mixed some things up a little bit to accommodate riflemen better. We start off with strength at 2 with bandolier to reduce ammo weight. Perception at 15, I've got all the riflemen perks maxed out. We've got tank killer maxed out for armor penetration, and we've got concentrated fire maxed out because we're definitely going to use this in vats. Uh, it has a little bit of a front sight on it, but not a super accurate aim down sights kind of weapon, so we'll rely on vats for headshots. Endurance at 3 for Radical is going to give me more strength when my rads are high, which they will be today because we're going to run at low health. Revenant uh, gives me more damage if I get revived during a fight. Not going to be a factor today, but definitely useful during normal gameplay. Charisma is at 7, so I can take Lone Wanderer for more damage avoidance and better AP regeneration. And Tenderizer is on there, which makes the target take more damage after we attack for 10 seconds. Probably not going to be a huge factor today with that slow reload speed, but I don't really have anything else more useful to put there, so I might as well leave it there. Intelligence is at 12. We've got Nerd Rage for more damage and AP regen at low health. Demolition Expert to max out that explosive uh, legendary effect. And then Gunsmith so that the gun breaks slower. I'd love to have it at 5 because the dragon is a pretty, uh, pretty quick to break weapon, but uh, we should make it through okay today. Under Agility, I've got 15 points in Agility, but you'll notice I have one unused here. I wanted to shuffle things around a little bit. I've got Covert Operative and Mr. Sandman on. I've got Sneak at 3. I've got Escape Artist, so if we uh, get detected, we can get out of trouble. Adrenaline is maxed out. Normally, I run Gunfu, but with a weapon like this that reloads so painfully slowly, I don't want to do that. I don't want to automatically swap targets. I need to be able to shoot and get away. And you'll even see throughout the video today where I try to manually back out of vats when I don't need to and pull up the pit boy. It's just kind of irritating. One of the things that one of the reasons I don't love black powder weapons, but I digress. We get the point. We're going for as much sneak damage as possible. Luck is at 15. We've got bloody mess for extra damage. Serendipity to help us avoid damage at low health. Class freak and starch genes for uh, so we can keep our mutations and reduce their negative effects. Then we've got Four Leaf Clover, Psychopath, and Grim Reaper Sprint, all there to help me get more chances at Vats Criticals, and we will get plenty of those today. All right, enough chit chat. Let's go kill some things. We're going to start off at Bogtown. All right, here we go. So we're going to make our way closer, and what do we have up front here? We've got some fog crawlers. So this weapon is, if you watched the, the legendary crafting video I did where I rolled it, I kind of think of this more as a big game hunter weapon, not so much a uh, an everyday kill everything kind of weapon. So, okay, we had a little bit of lag there, but two headshots did the job. Now the other fog crawler attacked the super mutants, and I think it's dead now. So we don't need to kill that one. But you'll definitely notice if we want to stay sneaky, we need to move slower. We've got a vats critical there. One shot on the super mutant, and bear in mind here that, much like a shotgun, the uh, the four projectiles that come out of here in vats stack on top of each other. So when we see 619 damage, that's 619 times four. This thing does a very serious amount of damage, no question about it. All right, we're starting to get detected. We're gonna have to be careful. Okay, we're in danger, and now this is the other problem with this weapon is because of the slow reload, you can't sprint while you're reloading. So you need to reload and then sprint away. It does definitely pose a challenge. This is not an easy weapon to use by any means. All right, who's left here? So we're still in stealth. We're back in stealth, I should say. Did we just come out of it? No, I think we're okay. So we can definitely see that sneak attack damage working in our favor. Super mutants are blind firing where I was, but not where I am now. There we go. Okay, so far so good. And a quad harpoon gun. All right, it's only a one star, but that's a good roll. 
I'll take a drop like that when I can get one. And the super mutant it, behemoth is moonwalking away. All right, one shot. Wow, one shot takes away half the health. But I don't think it quite gets him down to 40% for that executioner's effect. But that was also a VATS critical. And we've got another one. That should do the trick. Wait, did it do the trick? I think it did. Oh, no, it did not do the trick. Okay, we are... Oh, crap. Oh, crap. He's right on top of us. Jumping away, jumping away. Oh, no. Uh-oh. So now we've got to sprint away, try to get into caution, and now try to reload. So there you can see the challenge with this weapon. You can't just sprint away easily. It's not a fast reload. It takes forever and a day. Now we should get him. So... We should have got him the last time, but Vats just didn't register. Gotta love that. All right, and that clears out Bogtown. All right, next stop on our big game hunting tour of Appalachia is Sunrise Field. We'll get some Mirelurks here, some Mirelurk Kings, and eventually a Queen. So this weapon, remember that if you're trying to use this indoors in close quarters, you're probably going to have a bad time. It just reloads too slowly. That's why we're not going to places like uh, White Spring today. There's really no point. I want to try to clear out the Blood Eagles so they're not aggroing the Mire Alert Kings because that'll disrupt our stealth benefits. But Blood Eagles should be squishy enough that we can just get them. All right, let's just get to safety up here. All right, get back in stealth. We're good to go. Now we can take our time and reload. And let's just see how we do here with these Mire Lurks. So with the Super Mutant Behemoth, we didn't really get anything out of Executioners. That guy was probably just a touch over 40% health. I didn't see a big jump there. So that's uh, that's the kind of kind of the big question with this weapon. And that's critical one shot kill. Probably would have killed him even if he wasn't a little bit low on health to begin with. But yeah, so far the Executioner's effect has not been a factor. Not because it doesn't work, but because everything's dead before we get there. Because the dragon is just so powerful to begin with. When we combine that with uh, sneak attacks. So it is a loud weapon, it's not a suppressed weapon. So you do have to be careful with it. Try and aim down sights, probably a little too much distance there. And we're shooting the shell, which is really tough armor. Uh oh. Falling in the water. Where are we going? All right. I heard another one clickety clacking away down there. Oh, we got a legendary over here. Look at that. You're dead in one shot. Okay. So we should have another one in the lake, and then we can call out the queen. All right. Come on. There you go. All right. We'll reload before we call out the queen. We'll just need to toss a grenade in here to get her attention. Drink up a little water while we're there. So yeah, so I can drink water while I reload my uh, my massive black powder rifle, but I can't sprint while I do it at the same time. All right, so she's out, and we're going to aim down sights there, try and hit her in the legs. So far, so good. And she's definitely tankier than some of these other enemies. Let's try and cri cripple those spouts. All right, one shot doesn't do the trick. Maybe two will. If we can do that, that's good, because we want to stop that poison from hitting us. That is always tough at low health, and the spouts are crippled. And we're in danger. Not good. Okay. But she can't spit poison at us, so we can finish the reload. And then run away. Uh-oh, we're low. Okay, gotta sprint away. Never mind. Alright, we're, we're low health, we're detected, and we've got a disease. Isn't this fun, boys and girls? Okay, so there's our queen. There should be another mire lurk around. All right, hit the spouts again, hit the torso, hit the legs. Legs are a good place to hit. Not quite down to 40% yet. This one, I think we might get to see the executioner's effect in action. All right, there's another one. I've got a VATS critical. Okay, so we're now down below 40% health, but one shot would probably kill her anyway, even without executioners. But yeah, you can definitely see the damage numbers jump there quite significantly. 330. 330 a piece for four shots, so that's pretty good compared to the 200 and something we had a minute ago. 
but it really wasn't a factor here. It's a nice effect to have on paper, but it really wasn't a factor. And now we'll visit the Fisher site. We've got a legendary Scorch Beast flying around. This one's going to be a bit more of a challenge because we're probably going to get detected here quite a bit and need to run for cover. So there we go. Detected already. But now we're safe again. So the ideal scenario here is to take out as many of these Scorched as we can to build up adrenaline and then go for the Scorch Beast. But with a weapon this loud, we've got to really keep distance or we're going to get detected. And I don't know how successful we'll be. We'll try our best. And there's the problem, is uh, you get too far away and you don't have any VATS accuracy. And now they're all swarming me. So we get lots of, uh, lots of damage from being low health, but we're definitely at really high risk too. So that's definitely something worth considering if you're going to run with a weapon like this. You may in fact be better off running at full health, even though you might miss out on some damage. So now that I see how it's working, I kind of regret going low health here because I think maybe we could have uh, gotten a little more mileage out of the legendary effect if we were full health. Maybe that Mire Alert Queen would have uh, landed right at like 38% health and then one executioner shot would have done the job. Maybe the behemoth would have been similar. It's kind of hard to say, but that's okay. We made our choices and that's what it's all about. We decided to go for maximum damage. And we're definitely getting maximum damage out of this. It's just a, it's a challenging weapon to use and stay alive with, especially in scenarios like this. All right, there's at least two more down here. Fortunately, once we can get a shot on the head landed, they're absolutely dead in one shot. It's just so hard to do. It takes so long to reload this weapon. All right, now we're reloaded. Let's use a uh, escape artist. Okay, we got another one, and there we get stuck in vats. This is my this is my frustration. Is I'm unsure whether or not the target is dead, so I vats and then I try to pull out of vats just kind of by reflex. But I don't need to. I have to remember I don't need to do that. Scorch will definitely be dead with a headshot. There we go. There we go. All right, are there any left on the ground? I'm still showing is in danger. There's one more down here. Let's find him. Got a critical, guaranteed hit. Good to go. Back in danger. But I... Oh no, we got some more down there. Okay, let's go hunt him. Let's go hunt him down. Are we close enough? There we go. Back in danger again. I do really like the reload animation on this. It looks great. The black powder flying everywhere looks great. The smoke out of the muzzle looks great. The weapon itself is awesome. It's an awesome design. It's definitely fun to use. It's just really challenging. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Not everything needs to be easy. So if you want a challenge, you want to go big game hunting in Fallout 76, then hey, the dragon is probably a good choice for you. It's just going to be a bit of a challenge to do it. And that's okay. And their vats just didn't count. Thanks, Vats. The Scorch Beast would be dead very quickly if it didn't take 10 freaking seconds to reload this thing. All right, so there's a nice chunk of health off. And do we have another critical saved up? We do. Look at that. So the Vats critical is doing its job. And once again, the executioner effect, not a factor. It's just not a factor. We'll stay on the torso here. One shot should do it. There we go. One Scorch Beast down. So that was much more challenging than it usually is. But the weapon itself is doing just fine. The Executioner effect is just uh, fairly useless so far. All right, two more stops on this run. We're going to head down to Watoga and play tag with some Assaultrons. That should be fun. We'll see if their one shot kills or not. Hopefully they will be, because if not, we are toast with a weapon as slow as this. But we'll see what we've got here. I think we've got a critical, and yeah, one shot with the critical. That works out nicely. So again, Executioner's not really doing anything for us, but the weapon itself is amazing. Now, you might get a little more out of that if you're fighting something like Earl or the Scorch Beast Queen, but 
I just think the overall DPS on this weapon is still going to be too low. It's just too slow. It really is. But it's still fun to use. I don't think it's a big boss weapon, but maybe. Maybe it's a big boss weapon in the right hands. Let's see here. Okay, so we've got another Assaultron critical down. All right, so that's critical to the torso on an Assaultron, and they are toast between the explosive effect and sneak criticals. That's really all we need. And let's go ahead and find another one. I think there's one or two more left. Protectrons and things like that, I think, are, are fairly easy targets for a weapon like this. We don't really need to worry about that, but... Going after Assaultrons is always dangerous game. And for some reason there, uh-oh, oh, maybe we got detected when we hit. Okay, so this is going to be tough. We got to get away. We got to get away and stim pack because she is right on top of us with that face laser. All right, now we can reload. Now we've gotten to safety. I think we got detected right as we hit or right before we hit. That's the only thing I can think of that explains that damage drop off, but we got away. We made it. One more dead Assaultron, and I think there's one more as we go along the, the walkway here for a total of four, I believe. And I hear Protectron down there. I don't care about the Protectron. All right, no Vats critical available. Are you going to die in one shot? Yes, you are. So we can see quite a bit of damage there. We did very, very well with this weapon. And now we're going to make one more stop just for fun. And here we are at Solomon's Pond for our friendly neighborhood super mutant behemoth. We, uh, we took out a behemoth earlier, but it was in a group and there's other stuff running around. And, you know, it's kind of confusing when it's trying to kill you. This one is a little more predictable. Let's get a shot down the sights. There we go, and will we be quick enough for follow-through to kick in is the question. Or for follow-through to still be kicked in. Let's see here. Can we get lined up again? And no, I think we lost follow-through. That's the problem. Now, maybe if I had vats there, it would have been better. But now I'm in danger. So we'll reload, but he doesn't see me yet. We've got some, uh, some trees blocking the path. I think we're safe. Let's see what we've got here. Come on, Behemoth. There we go. All right. Uh-oh. So we have been detected and our head has been crippled. Let's get away. Take a stim pack and heal up. The nice thing about this area is there's lots of terrain and obstacles to block the Super Mutant Behemoth. Whereas at Bogtown, they can just kind of run over flat land. And there we go. So there, I think we saw the Executioner's effect in action. And that is a very animated death right there. Let's go back and just look at that in slow motion because it was a little quick. The numbers kind of fog up there. It looks like we're in the 300s on that damage versus the 200s we were seeing earlier. So that's definitely the Executioner's effect in action there. We got him right below 40% health. So that definitely, definitely helped us out quite a bit. So uh, we at least got to see the effect in action once. Let's talk conclusions. So the big question, as always, is this weapon good? Well, I think the answer there is it depends. If what you want is something that's going to do a ton of damage in one shot and you don't mind trading off the need for more skill, more challenge, more patience to get that, then yes, it's a good weapon. If you're looking for an easy weapon, if you just want your choice of weapon to be an easy button for Fallout 76, then the dragon is definitely not that. Uh, it's loud, so you get detected very easily. It's extremely slow, so if you do get detected, you are in a lot of danger very quickly. Um, but it also has a really unique look. The animations are fantastic. It does feel good to use. I enjoy using the weapon. It's fun, but it is definitely a challenge. If you want an easy path, the dragon and black powder weapons in general are not going to be that easy path. If you just want to see big damage numbers and you don't care about the rest, then this will definitely be a fun choice. And you don't have to run it all the time either. That's the other thing with weapons in this game is 
we've all got more than one, so use this as a big game hunting weapon for the occasional kind of uh, tour around Appalachia, and you could have a lot of fun with it. But if you try to run with this all the time, you're probably not going to enjoy it all that much. As for the legendary effects, the executioner's effect, uh, it wasn't all that good. It, it, I mean, it worked fine when it worked, but we only saw it once because this weapon was doing so much damage that we just didn't really need it. Now, I think a smarter choice here may have been to run this at full health. Uh, if I had this to do over again, I might do that, but this is what we did, so this is what we're going to look at. And uh, if I ran it at full health, then we might have gotten a little more mileage out of the Executioner's effect because we probably would have had to chip away at health bars on our enemies just a little bit more. But uh, overall, I can't really say the effect is bad. We just didn't need it. Uh, the explosive effect certainly countered that too. When you've got a weapon with really high base damage, you're going to get a lot of uh, excess explosive damage too. So that was definitely a factor as well. Then when we factor that in with our sneak criticals and Mr. Sandman and all of that, it's not really that shocking that we didn't need the Executioner's effect very often. But it was nice to know it was there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to bring this one to a close. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you did, please do go ahead and subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, follow me on Twitter. You know the drill. You all know what to do at this point. And uh, other than that, I hope I see you all next time. Till then, I'm Fisty McRib.